Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Today, I've got a new decluttering trick for you that I've been using lately that's been really helpful, so I thought I'd share it here. I think it's helpful when we constantly think of new ways to approach decluttering. It keeps it fresh, it keeps it interesting, it keeps you on your toes. I feel like decluttering is a skill that you can always improve, always hone. And so it's something I'm thinking about, what are new approaches or questions I can be asking myself to improve my decluttering? So this is something I've been thinking a lot about. Basically, I often have noticed when I do decluttering, I think a lot about the history of the object, what I've done with the object, why it's important to me in the past, but I don't as frequently think about the future of that object. Yes, I'll ask myself a question about like, oh, how much will I use this in the future? But I don't actually take the time to think about the future life of that object and its true journey and path and what that will look like. What I've been doing lately, and yes, it's kind of a slow process in a certain sense, but I think it's helpful, is to take the object, hold it in my hand, and just think about what is the future path of this object? If I keep it, where will it spend most of its time? What will it be doing most of the time? How often will it see the light of day? I almost like to weirdly imagine myself as the object. Now I know we're going a little kooky here, but like if I were this object sitting in a drawer, what would that experience be like? Just sitting in that drawer waiting to be used and how much of my time as that object would I actually be doing anything? Also imagining to what extent will this object take up space and add to the clutter in my home? How long will this object maintain its integrity? Or will it start to gradually lose its quality or purpose? Will you forget where it is? Will you know where to find it when you need it? Will you even remember you have it? And then if you follow the life of that object through to its very end in your life, when will you actually rid yourself of that object? Will it be in another big, arduous, challenging declutter? Will you even use it before it reaches that point? Or how often will you use it before it reaches that point, before you're coming back to do another declutter? I have this tendency to think I'll use an object a whole bunch in the future, but if I actually take the time to visualize what the experience of that object will actually be from beginning to end, it puts into perspective how often I'll actually use that belonging. And while it would take a long time to do this with every object I'm decluttering, I especially like to do it for those ones that I'm a little bit indecisive about, where I kind of go back and forth, or especially for those sentimental items that I'm just keeping basically so that I can come across them in a future declutter and have that aw moment that I'm experiencing now. But how frequently will I actually use that object? And what will the experience of that object be? Just sitting in a bin for years and years and years? And then when I eventually rid myself of it, will it really be any different from if I just rid myself of it now? And in fact, maybe it would be better if I rid myself of it now because it's not as old or as worn out. Maybe it's something that someone else could find use in. Basically, I just think for those objects that are hard to let go of, we can use this as a way to really imagine out the full journey of that object and whether it is really worth it for us to keep. Looking not only into the past, but deeply playing out the future of that object can be really impactful. And now I'm gonna take a quick break to discuss the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where they offer thousands of classes on all sorts of things. With Skillshare, you can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and just get lost in creativity. I love that they have a lot of practical skills, things like business analytics, cooking, freelance and entrepreneurship, leadership and management, marketing, while also having areas of creativity like illustration, design, in addition to personal development type courses that I find I really enjoy. Most recently, I've been taking the course Reach Your Goals, Seven Personal Development Exercises to Build a Life You Love, created by Nedra Tawab, who is both a therapist and an author. I think doing some of these personal development courses can feel a little hokey at first, but then when you dive into them, they can be really helpful and just 
re-jumpstart your creativity or your interests or your goals. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description box below will get a one month free membership to Skillshare. So it's a great free way to get started. Anyway, back to this decluttering trick. I know it's very simple and straightforward and it might even slow down some of the declutters in that you're not making decisions as quickly, but I do think that sometimes we can just get tangled up and caught up in our thoughts and our indecisiveness when it comes to decluttering. I know that is a huge trap I fall into where I'm kind of debating back and forth or I put something in the giveaway pile and then I take it back and I put it back in the maybe pile. And that is what really, for me, clogs up my decluttering process. So by having this trick that I can use for those back and forth items, I'm able to more concretely visualize what role this object will really have in my life and whether I should keep it. And quite often it'll ultimately lead me to decluttering more stuff, which ultimately that's the best way to pursue minimalism and to declutter. I've noticed the biggest changes I've seen are when I just managed to get rid of a higher percentage of my stuff. For so long, I was doing a bunch of declutters and I would just get rid of like one out of 10 items. There were many months that went by where I was just getting rid of like 10% or maybe even 5% in declutters. And I just wasn't getting rid of enough to see that payoff. But once you just take that leap and get rid of a higher percentage of your stuff, and use tricks like this to help you do that, you really start to see how life just becomes easier and easier and better when you have less stuff. You have less stuff to put away, to organize, to clean, to repair, and you can get back to focusing on your passions and your interests and really what's important to you. I really don't think I would have time to make this YouTube channel if it weren't for doing the declutters that I did because I would be dealing with all my crap all the time. It's so easy to develop these clutter zones, these nests of clutter in our homes. And the only way to tackle them is to be willing to try new strategies to declutter, to be thinking outside the box and to be just perspective taking. Taking a new perspective to allow you to see how minimalism can play a role in your life, what role these objects actually play in your life or don't play in your life, and move forward from there. If you ended up enjoying this video, hit the thumbs up button below. You can also subscribe below for more content like this on minimalism, decluttering, also things like building an empowering mindset and psychology. All of those things support the channel and me, and I am so grateful for those of you who have joined this community. Also, if you want more content from me or you wanna find another way to support me, you can join my Patreon, I'll link that below. And you can also follow me on Instagram. That's all I've got for you today, but thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.